Welcome to Rule of Thirds, an offshoot of our Screen Refresh podcast. Our goal every episode is to take a little break from watching and analyzing movies to dive headfirst into some nostalgia or just get a little creative. So every month we select a different topic and create a top three list, or most memorable list, (laughs) that may or not be near and dear to each of our hearts. Shoot us a message on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Screen Refresh, or or shoot us an email at ScreenRefresh at gmail.com to let us know what your top three are or suggest future topics for us. I'm Dean, one of your three hosts, and as always, I'm joined by my fellow hosts, Dick, Dick, (laughs) Dick and, Dick and Slim, Dick and Slim. So you're looking to start a fight? (laughs) I almost left. I'm like, no, that almost does screw up the recording. (laughs) Oh, great. Hello there. Uh, I like that. Dick and Slim, I want to call you guys from <laughs> Slim Dickens. Uh, yeah. No bother. I I noticed that, you know, I was getting pedantic uh, um, with our episodes. We say top fights, and then we always find some way to, like, I would have chose this, but everybody talks about this. So I want to choose something a little less known. So. I guess I, I'm like, yeah, I think Nick came up with memorable fights because we could do fights one, fights two, fights three. Just like any of our other topics we haven't really circled back on yet, but we should probably do that sometime. I think when yeah. the, the creative well runs dry, you'll get the, the sequels. Or, yeah, the <laughs> games that should be adapted into movies too or something like that. Okay. We it, lost that window when The Last of Us came out, so maybe you you'll see it when uh, The Last of Us Two premieres. I don't know. There's plenty of time. There's so much stuff to talk about, and you know our time is finite, so there's only so many things we can cover and talk about. We only have so much time on this earth, and we want to put out as many sequels <laughs> that we have. You're all spending it listening to us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so, you, city. Hopefully, you're being productive, but all like multitasking too. You know. Or if, if if you're just chilling, that's fine. You're sitting on a Zoom meeting, camera off, <laughs> on mute, listening to this. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> so fights, I mean, lots of movies have fights. More than one fights, even. Some movies are entirely centered around fights. There's so well when you fights to pick from. When you picked top memorable fights, what is your definition of a fight? I mean, because I'm that not... can go like it, that can be brought into. I see Tim's like has that look on his face. No, for real, because it could be like um, shouting matches. Yeah, a shouting match. It could be just like <laughs> the Nick chooses marriage story with uh, Adam Driver. <laughs> I mean, yeah i I was picturing I can't argue. physical can't altercations. Argue. Nick loves to bend right. the rules. But it, it could be realistically, yeah, it's anything. It's two opposing forces. Yeah, I guess, of course, I just immediately think of physical combat. But um, if if there was a really epic argument, fight, I'm sure, sure. <laughs> I chose sure. Doubt with we Philip to... <laughs> Seymour Hoffman and Meryl Streep. Yeah, so I, I bet you, and, and I'm sure your fight is is an argument, Nick, right? No, I was just yeah. trying to make conversation <laughs> yeah, at that time. I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, so many fights out there. Uh, I think we, Nick had mentioned offline, um, extended it to television, but I don't know if anybody chose television. I didn't. Because there's plenty of good I, ones I on ended TV, up, too. Yeah, I, I was torn between two choices, and literally seconds ago, I asked you to confirm your choice, so I didn't impede on what you selected and i'm actually going to fall back to my original one because we've already i think talked about that scene in a different episode and this one i'm not sure if i have already but any opportunity i can to talk about it i will so yeah I'm well with to that try to go for the with that i say go ahead get right into it so um at the end of the star wars rebels show not the actual end, but we finally get a rematch of the century where we finally see Obi-Wan Kenobi fight off against Darth Maul. And um, we know like this is it. That he's finally going to get the rematch that we're expecting. The fight starts, you know, Obi- um, 
Darth Maul takes out his double bladed lightsaber. He brandishes it, does a flurry, and he's trying to egg on Obi Wan, trying to get him back to, you know, like twenty plus years, twenty five, thirty year. I don't know whatever the time frame is. Like a long time ago, from this is like just before Episode Four, all the way back to bring him back to Episode One, where like you know I killed your master. You remember Qui Gon? He's dead because of me. And you see Obi Wan ignite his own weapon in response. And then you see him do his classic, like, General Kenobi kind of style. And then you see his face change in, as he's thinking this fight through. And he goes from, like, the very, um, I don't want to say arrogant, but just he's very, uh, it's, a, it's a very aggressive stance with the way that he's holding it. Then he changes it up to what and how Alec Guinness holds his lightsaber and it's a lot more reserved. Like, this is who I am. No, I'm no longer the general. I'm no longer like Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm now old Ben Kenobi. And you see him change his stance. And then you see him change it one more time to reflect how Qui-Gon used to um, have his stance. And that triggers Maul to immediately start attacking. And the fight is over within three strokes. <laughs> It's a very, um, you know, Kurosawa, old samurai style fight where you have two masters that know there's only so many different ways that we can do this. And because they're the masters of their craft, it is a true, like the, the fight scene seriously is like maybe f not even five seconds long. And behind the scenes, if you've examined the f um, the moves that Maul did against Qui-Gon versus the moves in this Qui-Gon or um, Darth Maul had set up Obi-Wan to he was going to kill him literally the same exact way that he killed Qui-Gon but Obi-Wan saw through that blocked his shot and then before Maul can do like the saber headbutt thing that he did to catch Qui-Gon he butts him in like the chin spins around and stabs him Obi-Wan was able to, you know, block that and just slice him in half. So when he goes to push him up and, you know, hit uh, Obi-Wan's chin, that's where the slash happens. And Maul didn't see it coming because he was so expecting it to just, you know, rinse and repeat exactly what he did so long ago. And just the way that it was handled, it was such a very mature way of handling it. I know it was kind of a hot take because a lot of people wanted to see that episode one style combat with lightsabers all over again. But this is like, they're not young kids anymore. These are really old men, you know, and it was a very nice callback to one of the things that Star Wars was based on, which was, you know, those Kurosawa movies of, you know, of old. So that is cool. Like I totally get how people can be let down by, like a five second fight, like all this, oh, it's going to go off again. We finally get to see this and it's over that quickly. But you're right. It makes so much more sense for the characters. It makes so much more sense for kind of the the theme that they're going for from there as far as kind of abandoning your past, growing into the person you are now, learning from mistakes. It, it would end up, if it turned into a slugfest for like five minutes of them going back and forth, then it wouldn't, really satiate anything other than just yeah we want to see a lightsaber fight but that could have just been anybody having a lightsaber fight at that point yep it's maul had his, maul had his good his last good lightsaber fight was against ahsoka during the clone wars finale and that was really well done but and it was cool because these as you're watching it you can tell that they used motion capture and they actually brought in Ray Park to reprise his role of Darth Maul again. And you can kind of see that in the animation. And I thought that was really cool because you can see it translated perfectly into the animation. We've come so far with mocap that it's it's really cool they're able to do this sort of stuff. But as flashy as that one was, I think as an adult watching this one really set a different tone. And it was really cool to see it done that way. I feel like I forget how much maul was in yeah he's because of missing out on not watching rebels and not watching clone wars and it's like only getting half of the the message there when solo premiered and everyone's like why the hell did darth maul show up at the end i was super excited to see him but then realizing the entire theater was like what the fuck he's dead why is he back I'm like oh no he's 
he hasn't been dead for like at least 10 years at this point. Like he's been around for a long time and he's been a key player. So it was very interesting to see him in the movie live action once again, which was cool. So yeah, no, he's mall returned. <laughs> it's a good story for another time. <laughs> Um, was there a build up to this? So Maul, I am not, I'm really unfamiliar with the Rebel show. I'd heard of this fight. My friend Jeremy had mentioned like that this fight is just like worth, just like the meetup is like worth the price of watching the show alone. Um, but the, was there like a build up to this beyond the obvious, you know, the the fight from the movie? Uh, a a little bit. Yeah. Uh, um, Obi Wan. <laughs> completely forgot about Darth Maul, you know, like, oh, I killed him. <laughs> and that was it. But meanwhile, somehow you've not, returned. <laughs> not Who? to go too in depth into it, but you know, he gets cut in half, he falls down that chute at the end of the first movie. He lands in the garbage compactor basically, and he gets carted off world to a junk planet. His hatred keeps him alive because that's how the dark side works. He goes literally crazy over the next 15 years wanting to get back to civilization and destroy Obi-Wan for everything that he did. And his brother ends up going on a thing and it's a whole big story, yada, yada. But, you know, seeing Darth Maul come back even in that first episode and it's like, holy shit, this guy's batshit insane. It's not like he's just really wanting to kill him. Like, no, he's one flew over the cuckoo's nest. He's, he's, He's completely gone. Is his brother's name Robert Mall? Or... I wish. <laughs> Bob Mall. <laughs> uh, though, yeah, it's cool. I just kind of, while you were describing it, I just threw it on YouTube quickly just to check it out. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty emotional fight. It is. Yeah. The, Very samurai. Um, the build up to this, yeah, the build up to this too. You, you knew it was coming, so once it finally did, it's like, oh shit, this is it. This is it. So, Dean, I guess that means I have to go next. Uh oh. So we get to find out. I don't think this is your pick, but I think I know what your pick is. Okay, good. Um, did because... you look at my YouTube search history? <laughs> no. so there's a bunch of fight scenes i love a well choreographed fight scene in movies like all of the, the martial arts films everything like that but there is one movie that is not a well choreographed martial arts fight it is a back alley slug fest oh did we pick the same one yes we did oh, i knew God. it i fucking knew it yeah did we just become best friends <laughs> So, Dean, what it's, movie did I pick? Um, if you've ever thought it might not, how hard it could be to get your friend to put on some sunglasses, <laughs> you haven't watched the movie They Live. Yeah, John Carpenter's They Live, Rowdy Roddy Piper and Keith David, in an effort, and once he ends up finding these sunglasses, it allows him to peer through the the facade of this alien <laughs> culture on earth that's taking over everything. And he decides that he needs to get this friend on board with him, but he needs to look through these glasses to be able to kind of explain it. And he does not want to do that. So what he results in this like eight minute back alley struggle of them just smashing each other around and throwing each other and doing suplexes until eventually he can just wrestle glasses onto Keith David. And I don't know if this is like a, a preview of things to come for you, Dean, when it comes time to like put clothes on your kid. But like it's <laughs> this is this is what is changing a diaper will become. <laughs> <laughs> but once, yeah, once 100%. my daughter is taking steroids and going to the gym, it will be this hard. <laughs> when she just lifts you up in the air vertically and then just drops <laughs> you backwards, <laughs> suplexes me. God, I forgot that entire scene existed and that's why i just this... burst out laughing remembering that just how ridiculous that entire fight was 
Because then it's over something that silly. And then they're like BFFs through the entire rest of the movie. Yeah. yeah. But it was just, God damn it, put on the sunglasses. And he just did not want to do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I told you I didn't want any part of this. I didn't want to be involved. <laughs> and he punches I don't want to fight you. Come on. I don't want to fight you. Oh. Stop it. No. <laughs> put on the glasses. Come on. Man, I told you, I didn't want to be in. This, I mean, this, I love the, first of all, this whole thing starts, I forget what the, um, uh, Keith David's character is trying to help him out. What's his name? He has a good name in this movie. Keith David. No, it's Frank <laughs> Armitage. Frank. Frank. Yeah. Um, um he, he's Roddy Piper like, is not here's a, a, here's a week's worth of pay and he just, from about 20 yards away, just underhands like a wad of money into like this box <laughs> that he's holding, like in one take. Maybe not one take, but one shot. It's a, uh, it just seems so effortless. It's just really cool. Um, but with Roddy's like wrestling background, there's definitely a couple like suplexes and <laughs> oh, yeah, body definitely. slams. Like, I mean, it's, I never really would think about like, oh, yeah, like, uh, what's a person that I would expect in this, like, major fist fight slug fast keith david i love keith david we have said it many yes, times on this great. show but it never would cross my mind to be like oh what's your favorite fight scene in a movie oh that <laughs> one with keith david in an alley <laughs> and it is the guy with the voice and the the gravitas yeah i really mean right to all to pick like it man or something like old boy or something that's like really oh martial yeah, arts heavy. fight yeah. Hallway fight old boy epic. I I thought Dean Daredevil. was originally going to go with um Cocaine Bad Dog fight in the Raid. Raid was one of the first movies that came to mind, but before I even started looking it up, I they live, I was just like, wait, that's that's such a good fight. <laughs> yeah. Well, in my head when I said like, oh, we should do memorable fights, or I said top fights. Um and it was yeah, and I was thinking something along the lines of, like, They Live. And then when I sat down to actually come up with what I was going to pick, I was like, well, if They Live was the one that came to my head as the example of, like, what I'm thinking, then I probably should just go with They Live. Yeah. That's how I usually go about it. I don't really try to think hard over my choices. The first one is usually the one I'm going to want to talk about the most anyway. I think because there's so many fights, I had that kind of same feeling. I'm like, I've locked in on this one, and I'm just going to to go with it because i could i could think I, for a week on what fight i is i want to talk about because i changed gears because i expected you guys to pick like the hallway fight from daredevil and you know the, ah. the super big stuff that it's like oh yeah it's the church They're shootout great from face off like i i thought that would have been it and when you mentioned how you wanted to take a more like you know avant-garde approach to it I'm like all right well my first choice was that sort of thing but i went with a, something a lot more popular and plus i think we did talk about it already because it was that the rooftop fight from the end of the first turtles movie great fight which actually kind of goes very hand in hand with the the mall fight that you mentioned yeah. of it's not like a a back and forth battle it's just using a like Ending it quickly and successfully through just being smarter um, yeah. and planning. Because Splinter just does one move to disarm Shredder, and he's all oh, that's all he does is just wrap the spear, moves out of the way, throws him off the edge, and that's it. But when you die, you die without. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when Casey Jones flips it and you hear like a slide whistle. Whoops. <laughs> he just dances away. Um You see the blood spurt out of the back of the uh the garbage truck. <laughs> Onto the pizza delivery guy. I gotta get a new route. <laughs> and it freezes on him and everybody laughs. Funnier, yeah, funnier if he actually came back again. <laughs> Yeah, like the turtles just saw that happen and they ordered a pizza. They're like, well, Shredder's dead. <laughs> <laughs> that asshole's out of our lives. 
<laughs> That's making me hungry. I they live has such a I, I counted it from the from the time Frank throws the first punch until like uh John Nada's thirty six minutes. <laughs> thirty six. <laughs> Till John puts the glasses finally on his face, it's like five minutes and fifteen seconds. Now that's there's a couple insane. breaks in there because I mean that's, that's winded. It's it's funny. It's like, is this fight realistic? Yes and no. I mean, a couple of these hits would have caused severe brain damage. <laughs> they would have been done much yeah much sooner. But the exhaustion and the fact that it if they could withstand these punches it's realistic in that they get so exhausted by the end because they, they would be that winded from this kind of exertion. But the there's a few funny, well, there's one funny break where John picks up like a two by four and <laughs> uh, Keith grabs a bottle, glass bottle. John actually swings it and smashes the back uh, windshield of this car. And he immediately is like, oh, fuck, I could have like done some real damage to my friend. He's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Keith David goes to, in response, smash the bottle against the car to for to make a you know a makeshift a stabbing weapon, and it just the whole bottle just disintegrates. <laughs> and John laughs. He just laughs like it, it almost seems like that was unplanned, or I don't know. He maybe just acted it very well, but it, he just like belly laughs at like yeah, that bottle the exploding. Of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Frank doesn't care and just tackles him, and it. it as they as they get more tired, like Jean went to hit Frank in the nuts, and Frank's like, "You dirty motherfucker!" But then by the end of the fight, he knees him in the nuts five times in a row. <laughs> Frank knees John five times in the nuts, like after calling him dirty. It's like they were just that exhausted, and he wanted to end the fight. But it shows how much you know John is willing to kick his friend's ass to wake him up from. Wake him up to what's going on. <laughs> From alien rule. <laughs> yeah. I've seen people mention that it's like, it's a great metaphor for like how hard it is to wake, you know, or convince the masses of something bad going on, which could be used for, I think the wrong side, the conspiracy theorists could look at it and like, yeah, like just wake up sheeple. <laughs> like, We're a Roddy that's Piper in this scene. <laughs> But yeah, both sides could look like as themselves as the hero in the scene. But um, it it's fun because I feel like, and I don't know if it's kind of like a, a thing as far as action scenes, Eastern action scenes, or all of like the the martial arts movies. I've always loved because it was just let's do like a wide shot, or let's do like a static shot where we can just let them do their work and do all of the what we came to see, like show off how we can fight. And then a lot of the Western action scenes, like all the born identity kind of stuff ends up being all of this very run and gun fast cuts, always jerking around the camera that we always lose focus on what exactly is happening because it's, well, it, it, we're not really choreographing a fight scene. It's right. just a lot of quick tumbles and things. Yeah. We need to make Ooh, this punch I'm... look real. Now cut. We need to make this kick look real. Cut. Rewatching the fight because I only seen it like the last time I saw it was I think last summer. Um, Keith David took a pretty nasty spill at the back of the head. You can actually see his head all. Scratched. Yeah, they um, they did they did a great job of. I, I assume they shot this in order. Lots of times movies things are shot out of order just depending on what they need to get. But I assume with the makeup, they just probably went start to finish in order of the fight on this one it's a pretty small set or area that they're shooting in but um it has yeah, head looks head looks pretty gnarly on the because <laughs> john <laughs> smashed the back of his head like five or six times into the pavement <laughs> he just kills him outright <laughs> i mean it would have killed many people but <laughs> puts the glasses on him and his head just slumps <laughs> he has to weakens at burning him the rest of the time <laughs> John Nada is the pushiest sunglass hut salesman you'll ever meet. <laughs> Somebody forgot their foster grants. <laughs> ah, the 90s. This is the 80s. But I think foster grants, did those survive the 90s? I just remember all those I, vampire foster grant commercials. 
I mean, those were Ray Bans. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, but that was Ray Bans. I thought it was <laughs> Foster Grant. You made that joke, and I thought you knew this brand of sunglasses, and that's why you replaced it. I was like, it's Ray Ban sunglasses, but I thought you were making a joke. No, I'm just woefully misinformed. So Foster Grant, who knows? Ray Ban, alive and well, doing very well for themselves. Um, I always wanted a pair from Men in Black. Get one. I remember sure. after The Matrix came out, I begged my parents to let me get the Neo wraparound sunglasses. And we ordered them, and within like two weeks, I ended up sitting on them and crushing them. And since then, I had always gotten cheap sunglasses that are like $10, just because I couldn't trust myself with them. Speaking of The Matrix, this is how Morpheus used to have to wake people up out of The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Take the pill, you son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> not this year oh yeah those all oh, those lines off the top like john's like either put on these glasses or start eating that trash can <laughs> frank's like not this year like it's a great response to say not this year but like if you think about it like oh maybe next maybe next time yeah that it's it's more of a timing <laughs> issue rather than a willingness so it's like maybe you just caught me at a bad time <laughs> not this year Let's circle back on it, and maybe, maybe next year. Oh, yeah, but that's so. So is good. there a third fight? Do we a collective third fight we should talk about? I feel bad stealing yours. <clears throat> it's all right. We it's fine. We can it we happens. can collectively come up with one. I was right this time. I I had a feeling that you might have picked this one, but then there's so many fights. I was like, maybe not. I'm really surprised y'all did pick the same one. Surprisingly, it doesn't happen often. No. It's a very niche choice. That's why I was like, wow, okay. I feel it might have happened. I mean, I guess it is. The movie's culty. Not, cult classic -y, not culty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the aliens are kind of like the a alien cult, side, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, it's well known in, in fights, I guess. So that's why I guess I suspected he might have chosen it. Yeah, because originally I was really leaning towards closer to like the um, fight in Old Boy, the hammer fight, mm. um, which Pretty I mean good. essentially is the the fight in Daredevil when they do the the hallway fight and all these other things. It's all very similar. I love a good long take, and like I said, I hate the concept of the very quick cut shaky cam action scenes so when i get more of the the long take wide shot just like let me see everything that's going on and then just put the faith in your choreography team of they'll set up a good fight and that i appreciate more i think that's why i liked a lot more of the stuff like the the raid movies or the Ip man movies or all of that as opposed to some of the um like i mentioned like i don't want to specifically the born series but that's the first one that always comes to mind in terms of i can't see a thing that's happening <laughs> that, that's that oh paul greengrass i think that's like his style he's like just and handheld shakiness is kind of one of his mo's um i get it sometimes like because if it's a if you want a certain actress or type and they can't necessarily fight even if they train beforehand you can only get away with so much as far as one takes, but um, and I know the one the takes are whole... definitely more entertaining uh, as far as oh, yeah. the one they're even pulled it, off well. Even if it's not necessarily like a one take, but um, like just do, um, but clearly, yeah. lots of stuff going on in one shot, like very unhidden. Cuts. Yeah, yeah, correct. The raid is pretty uh, good at that, actually. That's one of those oh, yeah. stand up pieces. The I machete mean, the gang fight. fight. Oh my god! Well, yeah, and that. Dog. But the Mad Dog fight reminded me of the They Live fight just because I was watching it. The first time I saw it, I was like, oh my god, it's, how long is this fight? And then you think, <laughs> oh, okay. And then they start getting back up and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like at this point, why are you just like pouring all the blood out of your skull? Why haven't they turned the raid into like a beat-em-up game? Like they did with the Warriors, the, oh, was it yeah. the PS2 Warriors game. Oh, God. They could. They so should just good. do the raid game. 
I want so I I were really really um dissenting here, not dissenting. What's the word I'm trying to say? Digressing. Digressing. But um just that makes me think of uh they they recently announced that the comic series Turtles is becoming a triple A title video game. Um very excited. Which is a great start. I've been clamoring for a triple A Turtles like game for a long time now. Along the lines of, you know, PS5 or you know the P- the PlayStation Spider Man games and Arkham. Something to that caliber. They just haven't done that for the Turtles. I'm like, that's you could it's ready. It's right there. The IP yeah. is is a huge fandom and like it's fighting and characters, you could do a lot with it. It's built in to have four main characters <laughs> hey. so right there multiplayer doesn't seem tacked on it's like oh get three friends to also buy our game <laughs> um yeah like my i would say combine it take arkham combine it with like grand theft auto and story switching and um spider-man's manhattan like oh man that would be such a cool game that's all just about the fight. And you get to go in the sewer. That would be nice. <laughs> I hear the sewers in Connecticut are nice. The sewer is also cursed. <laughs> but you get a free pizza. <laughs> the pepperoni is also cursed. Uh, yeah, I mean, as like if I we said... would make it through an episode without you doing a Simpsons bit. <laughs> Simpsons, yeah, that it's really hard. To avoid being reminded of the Simpsons. So, uh, as up. far as fight scenes, I think these are Two. not the picks I was expecting. No. But if you, I think in terms of like we were talking about, all oh, the raid would be a good like game. They should have done something along those lines. I mean, also we mentioned the raid. So that's three, the raid. The raid. Um, but there's a game that if you've ever played called Sifu, um, that I think is available now on Switch and whatnot, but I originally played it on PC, where you play a young martial artist whose like father gets killed or family gets killed, and then he starts off young, and then your goal is to go find all of the people responsible and kill them, and then work your way up to their leader, and every time you die, you age. So depending on how you do you could end the game where you're like an old man who's moving slower and fighting off guys um but there's an entire set like section of it where it's you fighting up all of these different floors to get to the top and fight the person there and it felt very the raid especially since it's all of these very back and forth martial arts fights so that might scratch your itch dean could you is it <laughs> There are some elements in games that, like, it's like they call them, I guess, game breaking elements. Could you become so old you can't complete the game? <laughs> like, you just keep yes. dying? Oh my God. Well, I mean, yeah, it's well, because once you get to a certain point, um, I forget how old it is, where if you die, you just die. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. I'm sure some streamer set his own challenge where it's like, I'm going to beat the game as like a 200-year-old samurai guy. <laughs> Every swing destroys his stamina and the light breeze takes out half his health and he managed to beat it using like <clears throat> Donkey Kong bongo controllers or something. <laughs> just diodes stuck in a banana, just playing it using electric uh, signals. <laughs> So, yeah, definitely a fun game. Um, also on PC, there are mods. So you can mod it with, you play as Daredevil um, or Batman, and you can change out the movesets to actually be Daredevil's ones from the show or Batman's from the Arkham games. Or you wow. can play as Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> the Matthew Lillard version? No, the, the cartoon version. Okay. Oh, with AI, so. I think you'd probably have all his lines in there, too. <laughs> The Wonders of AI. So check out uh, Sifu or Sifu. Um, great game if you're into fighting stuff, beat-em-ups. Um, it kind of goes with the theme of all of this. But I I second They Live with Dean. I second The Raid. 
And I'm glad you showed us the other one, Nick, because I didn't realize that he fought Darth Maul. And I, I think it's a very cool thing. I especially didn't realize he was graying Kenobi and wasn't, you know, brown haired, long haired, bearded. Well, this they're is both bearded. But... This is five years before A New Hope. Gotcha. <laughs> you say five years after uh, episode three. <laughs> it's going to be a wow. That took a couple toll. years. <laughs> It looks great. That wraps up our episode on memorable fights. As always, you can reach us at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Screen Refresh, or shoot an email to us at ScreenRefresh at gmail.com to let us know what your top three are, or to suggest any future topics you'd like to hear us discuss. Also, we now have a Discord. Come over and chat with us and get behind-the-scenes tidbits on your favorite episodes. So that's it for us. So for Nick and Tim, this is Dean. You have a great week, and catch us next on Screen Refresh on the first Monday of the month. You can also listen to our sister podcast, Don't Open This Podcast, hosted by our own resident Tim and Mike Falsigno, every second and fourth Monday of the month. Are we doxing Mike? Is, is that that's fine? Yeah, he he gives out <laughs> he his, gives it out his Christian name. If I need to re-record that, I'll do that. But I think that's fine. Could you make your fighter naked and mod him to be naked during the if fights? You, if you had the knowledge and time, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> All so. right, I'm getting it. <laughs>